Okay, um, this is just an introduction to OERs, really. So, what are they? Uh, teaching, learning, research resources. Uh, a lot of them are in the public domain. Most of them are actually been uh, licensed for free use and repurposing. And this is how you'll see them. So, uh, Creative Commons license <coughs> gives various uh, rights to reuse without asking for permission. So um, almost all of these allow you to take the work, uh, reuse it. Uh, the ones with no derivatives are the ones that really have kind of restrictions on how you use it, but um, f for an educational setting. Okay, so why we do it is it just, just what Scott was talking about is the rising cost. The yellow uh, top one, that's textbooks. And this is just really general education uh, costs, but uh, textbooks are just um, really rising. What it means is um, just really a lot of added costs to, to go into school. So uh, I, I found these two studies interesting, and the one was um, Books and supplies, about 1,300 a year. And uh, this one here talked about students with financial aid, and theirs was about 600 a year. And it kind of leads <coughs> to an interesting um, view that students are making decisions when they're making money decisions. Um, a lot of them are deciding to uh, sort of forego textbooks. So this is a uh, research done at uh, Florida across um, a number of universities there. And two-thirds of students said that they didn't purchase a required textbook for class. And almost over a third thought that that earned them a poor grade or um, uh, made them fail the course. There's also the retention part of it as well. So uh, almost 50% thought that they took fewer courses or didn't register for a course uh, because of uh, lack of access to, or just because of the cost of the textbook. These, uh, this is from the Florida Virtual Campus study, but there's other studies <laughs> that uh, support these um, findings as well. One of the arguments uh, that I hear against OERs is that the textbooks, they're not as good. And uh, it's an interesting argument, but these are a number of studies that have shown that when they swapped out um, textbooks for uh, open educational textbooks or open educational resources, they actually found either similar student success or improved student success. The reasoning I'm thinking is that, first of all, students will have, all have access to uh, the textbook. The second part of it is that, and we'll talk to it later, is that you can rework the textbook. So you, you're not teaching to the textbook, but you can just grab pieces from these OERs and really fill it in and set your course goals as, as you want them. So we have... Um, a site at the library for uh, open educational resources where you can find them. Um, and one of the computers back here, too, is, uh, is turned to this page, too. But just to show you just a sample of, of different um, sites where you can go to and, and find these materials. The, the top two, I'm just going to go into really quick. This is uh, the Open Textbook Library um, out of the University of uh, Minnesota. And uh, this is all textbook based. These are all been used. Um, they have kind of a criteria. It has to be used in multiple classrooms. Uh, but you can browse. Uh, they have reviews on them. This is open educational. Uh, OER Commons is this site. And this is actually really expansive. And you'll see there's over 20 different categories of materials that you can find and just uh, plug right into. Um, right into a curriculum. I uh, just wanted to show this. This is, sometimes you'll pull things up, but this will actually show the conditions of use. So as long as it doesn't say no derivatives on it, and it has this here, uh, you can really uh, rework this material as you want. So some different ways of reworking things is you can just take one and just use it. Or you can uh, take part of one. 
uh, delete the things you don't like, type in the parts that you do want. Um, you can you know, list the students to do edits, to do assessment on it. And it doesn't have to be you know, the whole thing in one shebang. You can just do a section uh, and just, you know, just kind of repeat and build in subsequent courses. If you don't find any content, there's also, you can create in the classroom as well. You can sign groups. Um, each group writes a, a different section. They have a rubric. They evaluate it. Um, and then you can just repeat and build in subsequent courses as, as well. It could be really in any format. So Canvas has a Canvas Commons you can publish to. Um, these are different examples of, of uh, projects that have gone on here at the university. I work at HSU Press, and we're publishing our first textbook, should be out uh, end of fall. So um, we're really excited about that, too. But we also supply uh, copy editing. Uh, we can help you with peer review. So if you have textbook ideas, uh, things that you were thinking about doing can be really small. Uh, doesn't matter the size of the project, just let us know. And we did an affordable learning solutions um, program, um, brought in a lot of faculty, showed them uh, where to find these materials, uh, how to evaluate that sort of thing. And even when you don't adopt an OER per se, or just even reducing the cost of, of the books, it, it really just makes a, a, a huge impact um, over the class and, and really over the, um, the whole university. And that's that. Thanks.